Good morning. You sitting right there. And you standing. Sit down. Come on, sit down. Trucker Josh Vlogs is on. Stop what you're doing. I'm going to watch some videos. I'm just going to get some breakfast for me. I think you're going to be impressed. Breakfast of champions. Ah, so we got unloaded this morning. We got unloaded. If you watched yesterday's short little video, uh, you'll, you'll know where we are. We're in Snow Lake, Manitoba, which is, well, you saw the map before the video, right? Sort of northern Manitoba, north central. Got loaded back up with the back haul right out of where I dropped my stuff off. So there wasn't even any uh, any downtime. Took the stuff off, put other stuff on. Now I am 700 kilometers from Winnipeg, which means I will be getting there uh, after business hours today, but I should be home this evening sometime. And then I'm home for a few days. Saturday, Sunday, uh, we got plans. And then Monday I have an endoscopy where they stick that thing down my throat and I get all kinds of meds special meds from the doctor we'll see how that goes maybe we'll vlog it I'll give Britt the camera we'll see no promises we'll see what happens <coughs> and then Tuesday Wednesday Thursday I'm available to work Friday we got plans again but Thursday is American Thanksgiving why is Thanksgiving on a Thursday my American friends what a terrible day for a holiday what do you got to go to work on Friday then too so you get Thursday off, but then you got to go back to work Friday, then you get the weekend. Why not just make it on a Friday? And you get a long weekend. Or Monday or on a Monday, and you can get a long weekend. Thursday? So since their holiday, their Thanksgiving's on a Thursday, I can't make any deliveries in the U.S. Everything's going to be closed. Americans take Thanksgiving very serious. It's a serious thing. So do us in Canada, but I'm not quite as intense as... The U.S. always takes it to the next level in everything, right? You know, you think you're like doing a good job, you think you're doing the best you can, and then suddenly America comes by and they just got to do everything bigger, right? More serious. We love our neighbors. They're awesome people. So I, I hope you guys have a great Thanksgiving. Uh, doesn't bother me at all that it's on a Thursday. I just... Serious question, though. Why, why not a Friday or a Monday? Let's take this freight back down to Winnipeg and go home. I hear the fridge calling me already. It's yeah, there it is. There it is. Trucker -tru! I got some cold ones, trucker. -tru! You hear that? I'm a dork. Thanks for watching. So I've just got confirmation. Uh, just taking this load back to the yard. By the time I get back, uh, the receiver will be closed. So I'm just taking it to the yard, dropping it, and going home. A long weekend for me, though it's not very exciting because I'm not excited for this endoscopy. I really don't want this procedure, but the doctor's pretty persistent. We're trying to figure out, I have this lump that it feels like a lump. When I say lump, I know people get scared right away. I don't think it's anything serious. I think I'm okay, uh, but we're trying to figure out why. I think it's connected to my bowels. It might be connected to my stomach. The doctor's checked, I've had like CT scans, I think MRIs. We're trying to figure out, just in case, you know, we have a, a good healthcare system. We have a, we have an all right healthcare system in Canada, and we may as well make use of it to make sure that there's not something seriously wrong in there, because there could be. I mean, I do feel a lump in my back, right? Inside, like in there, I feel like it presses up against my other organs. So they want to make sure that there's not, you know, anything like a growing in there, worst case scenario, a tumor or something, right? That'd be terrible. I mean, what if it's benign, right? And then one day it just explodes, and then by the time we realize what it is, oh, sorry, stage four. I don't want to be a hypochondriac, and that's why I really didn't want to go for this procedure, because I really think I'm fine. I don't think I'm fine, but my wife is pretty persistent. The doctor's pretty persistent. I already missed one appointment, and I wasn't going to reschedule it. Right? I'm just like, oh, shoot, I can't make it. We'll have to cancel. Oh, shoot. And then I just didn't reschedule, right? <laughs> the doctor rescheduled it for me. I think he's in cahoots with my wife because she was trying to get me to reschedule it. They're all planning and plotting against me that I'm going to go and get this thing stuck down my throat, this little camera or something. I'm going to look around in my stomach to see if there's any problems in on that end of it. I don't know what the next step would be. I mean, hopefully, I'm fine. I'm fine. 
I don't like hospitals. I'm thankful for our doctors, but I don't like hospitals. I, I, I go as far to say as I hate them. I, I hate being in them. I hate the way they smell. I hate the way they feel. But I'm not complaining, okay? We'll go and get this thing done. Everybody says, you're going to be okay, Josh. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to be okay. I'm not worried about not being okay. I just... You men understand, right? You got my back here, right? You guys understand. I just don't want to go see the doctor. Hi-ho, hi-ho. Off to home I go. Can I make this corner? It is a tight driveway here. Holy smokes. Yeah, that's tight. Um, oh, okay. We gotta turn right here. That's a tight driveway. You don't wanna slip into the ditch. I don't know why you make this. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. Come on, old blue. Don't fail me. Oh, we got lots of room. 600 meters. Turn left on Highway 392. Trucker Josh, why'd you doubt yourself? Tons of room. So I've got these crates filled with like all these metal pieces that I'm taking back. They're like, like steel crates. Super simple. But it's a nice little backhaul. Get ourselves out of the bush here. I believe this is a copper mining town. I tried to Google it last night when I got here because I like to know where I am and you know what the history is. Meters. Turn left on Highway 392. You know me, I'm a dork. As soon as I get somewhere new, I'm like, oh, what's this place? Why is this place here? Who are these people? Why are they here? What do they do? What happened here? What's the history? So I looked it up and uh, Snow Lake is, uh, was a big Hudson's Bay mining operation. And I think it's still owned by Hud Bay, which is Hudson's Bay Company, I think. Either way, from what I could gather online, it, it sounds like they mine for copper and other minerals, like metals here. Like, but it's a huge operation. 100 meters, turn left on Highway 392. I got a little lost in town. Where that guy's going to the right, that goes into town. I'm going away from town to the left. But uh, I got lost. Now, there's a ton of people living here. There's like a big old city over there. Like a little city. A big old town, a little old city. Like a ton of people. And I've never been here before. This is my own province. Another new place that I've seen. That I never even knew existed. It's actually a really nice town. There's a nice little lake right off to our right here. The fishing is probably phenomenal. Continue on this road for 27 kilometers. Now I've looked at the forecast and we shouldn't run into any heavy snow. We might hit a little bit of a dusting on the way down, but nothing noteworthy. And uh, no winter storm warnings, no heavy snowfall warnings, no blizzard warnings. We should be, we should be good to go all the way back home.
good. They have a light dusting of snow on them, as you can see, but they're not slippery. But that could change very quickly. It's lightly snowing, temperature is minus five degrees Celsius outside. We're looking probably about 25 Fahrenheit. It's not that cold. And we're headed south down Highway 6 in Manitoba. Still have about three and a half hours to go. It's pretty cold out. I've got the winter front on Old Blue now. see it but it's there and it's windy let's quickly go wipe the snow off our lights third time i'm stopping to do this already Whew. it's definitely definitely feeling like winter out here better. All right, let's get back in the truck where it's warm. Oh man, is it summertime yet? Man, we are in Ashern, Manitoba. Ash Ern, Ashern. Ashern. Oh. Now we have uh, about uh, an hour to the city. I'm gonna fuel up once we get there. I was a little bit nervous because I only have fuel cards for like Petro Pass and Shell, which is Flying J. And as far as I could tell, except for this place here, might be a Petro Pass. There's it's a diesel pump over there, but I checked online and there was no fuel stops for either of them all the way between Winnipeg and Snow Lake where I was. That's like a seven hour drive, six, seven hour drive. So six, seven hours there, six, seven hours back on one tank of fuel. I still have about a third of a tank. Uh, yeah, a third, a third of my tanks. So I'll be fine, I'll be good. But I've had to really make sure that uh, I drive as economically smart as possible, which I usually do anyway, but uh, a little more so today. I was kind of worried about, uh, kind of worried about that. Not that it would be a big deal. I would just have to uh, stop somewhere and buy fuel on my credit card or something. I'd rather just keep it on my fuel cards because that comes right off my pay. I'm not gonna worry about that then. There is a, a diesel pump here at this Petro Canada. I don't know if it's a Petro Pass though. There's a difference between Petro Canada and Petro Pass, all owned by Petro Canada which is different than petrol stopping centers in the U.S. It's a Canadian. It is. They've made it back to Winnipeg. Just in the northwest corner of the city. I'm going to go to the Flying J card lot, grab some fuel. See how good we did on fuel economy on this trip. This is exactly the same place I fueled up on before we left the city. I've got just above a quarter tank left. This road for six kilometers. No, Karen, we're gonna go see what the numbers say first. And then we're gonna go back to the perimeter. I'm not going through the city with this thing. Are you crazy? She wants me to go right through downtown. Ha! These uh, fuel pumps here, this Flying J, are the strangest ones I've ever seen. I'll show you in a second here once this, uh, once this guy gets moving. right there it's so weird so we pull in here and then you gotta pull up like a car at, at like pumps to fill up your car 
Uh, you can fill up here on the left or on the right of this fuel island, or you can go to that fuel island, which I'm gonna pick, which is a separate one altogether. They're not even connected. You gotta take it really wide so that your trailer gets around there. And then you come back around and it's just like fueling up your car. And to get the tank on the passenger side, I've got to drag that hose over my catwalk behind my cab and fill it up that way. It's an old building that's been sort of renovated over and over and over, but that's how we do it. And well, whatever works, right? And then that's for gasoline for cars, as you can tell. This here is for diesel fuel. And so is the other one over there. <laughs> oh, Winnipeg. Winnipeg. There doesn't have to be a logical answer to why. The answer is just Winnipeg. <laughs> Nothing makes sense here. fuel island you've ever seen <laughs> all right folks the numbers are in so we fueled up yesterday at the exact same pump and we fueled up today almost 24 hours apart a little bit more Maybe about 30 hours apart, something like that. But uh, yesterday we filled up and then we drove up to Snow Lake, Manitoba and back. That was a total of 1,411 kilometers or 876 miles. We burnt 524 liters or 138.4 US gallons. That equaled out to 37.14 liters per 100 kilometers or 6.33 miles per gallon, which is good though. That's our target, that was pretty good. It costed me, in Canadian dollars, $1,147.06. It's one day, we filled up here yesterday, remember? On November 17th, we filled up here, it's November 18th now, $1,147.06. 1 1,147 CAD to USD. 1,147 Canadian dollars equals 854 United States dollars and 98 cents. For my American followers. So in Canadian dollars, that cost me 81 cents per kilometer to fuel this truck, or a dollar 31 per mile. A dollar 31 CAD to USD. 31 Canadian dollars equals 23 United States 1.31 CAD to USD. 1 Canadian dollar and 31 cents equals 98 United States cents. There we go. Just gotta talk to her the right way. So 98 cents US per mile that it cost me to move this truck down the road for one uh, 24 hour period. 1,147 Canadian dollars, or what did it say, 876 or something? You know, some US dollars. And that's what it cost to deliver that load and bring this one back down here. Now you know. Oh, yes, uh, the price of diesel fuel here is $2.19 per liter. 2.19 CAD to USD. Two Canadian dollars and 19 cents equals one United States dollar and 63 cents. Okay, so a dollar 63 US per liter. So we go a dollar 63 times 3.785. That is a total of six dollars and 17 cents US per US gallon. Now you know the facts. Let's go home. All right, now let me show you how we get out of here. All right. 
right, make sure no one's walking around our truck, check all our mirrors, give a little prop just to let people know we're about to start moving. Slowly roll out. Make sure all your lights are on. You know all this. I'm preaching to the choir here. Turn right. So like I said before, now when you look at the prices at the grocery store or wherever you are, because everything comes on a truck, when you're looking at the prices all around you, you know what one big contributing factor is. The price of diesel fuel right now. So when you want your stuff delivered, you gotta pay for the energy to deliver it to you. And that gets more and more expensive and then that gets passed down the line. Everything gets more expensive. In 100 meters, turn right on Lucas Avenue and then turn left in 20 meters. That is why we always advocate for cheap diesel prices, cheap energy. Let's dig that oil out of the ground, turn it into diesel fuel. Make life more affordable for everybody. Karen, be quiet, I'm not lost. That's how you get out of there, you gotta squeeze around the back. I know you can't see my trailer behind me, but you gotta make sure you don't take out their building with your trailer when you're doing that. Here we go out where we came in. Turn left and then turn right and forth. I have years. my signal on, Karen. I know I'm gonna turn left, you don't have to tell me. Such a bossy lady sometimes, you know? She thinks she's the boss. Turn right. What do you think I'm gonna do? I'm gonna turn around, go into the residential zone? Uh, the nice thing about evening time is there's not much traffic. That is lovely. trailer in the loaded lineup. Hopefully there's space for me. It's Friday, so it's going to be full. And it's winter time, which means nobody parks straight, which means there might not be enough space. We'll find a spot. Drop this trailer, throw my tarps on my catwalk, and we'll head to my shop get everything out of here and wind down a little bit. weekend projects right there, can't you? Can you figure out what it is? You're a little dusty here, aren't you? Uh, I'll dust you off one of these days. Polish you all up, get you ready for next summer. Uh, how's that sound? Hey? Eh? That's my, uh, it's a little V-Star 650. He's just a little guy. But, hey, gets me riding, right? One day, I'm a big old Harley, but for now, that's fine. Insurance for motorcycles is crazy expensive in Manitoba, so this thing is usually just on storage anyway. So. And now that we're having a baby, I'm gonna have even less time to go riding, so. One day in the future when my kids are grown up, maybe I'll get a nice Harley. We'll see. For now, I gotta get uh, this truck unloaded. Old Blue has put up with quite a bit this week again for me. We're gonna have a little bit of water on the floor in the morning. 
I really wish a drain would have been built into this place, but uh, it didn't happen. I didn't build this place. So uh, first thing in the morning, I guess I'll come here and squeegee it out. I have a floor squeegee, a really good big one. It doesn't take too long. You just squeegee it all out like that. But this isn't as bad as the last time, but uh, you can see there's quite a bit of snow buildup in there. And once all the snow melts off and I squeegee it out, I want to wash it down, get all the salt off of it. Uh, it's not good to let that salt sit on there very long, especially in here on the frame. I don't need anything rusting out on me. But other than that, it's been another good week, old blue. I had a lot of fun. Did you have fun? Yeah, that's good. We both had fun. <laughs>